How do you heal from spiritual abuse after going through traumatic experiences at the hands of a spiritual leader, being taken advantage of and manipulated in a church? The depth of trust that is broken in these circumstances can devastate us. So how do we get back up and pick up the pieces and heal and move on with our lives? We're going to talk about eight ways to do exactly that. And I'm so glad to have you here on the channel. I'm Aaron J. Daigle, international speaker in churches and Christian events. I've also authored several books, which are linked down in the description below. So be sure to check those out. And if you want to help spread the word by getting this content out to even more people, the best way to do that is to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. So how do we heal from spiritual abuse? The first is to speak to an outside voice who can see it objectively and give you clarity about what happened. Now a friend, relative, or parent would be really good here, but they've probably already been pointing out the red flags they see. And it might be hard to hear it from them, but when we get a professional outsider, it can help us to see things from a different light. When I went to see a professional therapist and told him what was going on, and even did my best to objectively give him both sides, and he looked across the room at me and said, man, this is crazy you are in an abusive situation that is manipulative it is punitive that man is taking advantage of you it is unhealthy and you need to get out of that environment hearing that outside voice tell me that was when I realized okay I'm not crazy I began seeing that this is a legitimate problem that this is abuse so seeing that clarity was the first step in me healing because I realized this is something I need to heal from now seeing that helped me to do the second thing we need to do in order to heal and that is to call it for what it is for so long I tried to justify my former a pastor's actions and words. Like maybe he's right and I'm wrong. Maybe he's hearing from God and I'm not. And I would see the demonic influences in his life and the signs of narcissism and how he matches the description of a sociopath to the T. But I felt like it was wrong to say that or to acknowledge that. But how do we heal from a traumatic experience with an individual if we don't know what that individual was or what they were doing? So I began to call it for what it is and identify it. Now I didn't go on Facebook and say pastor so-and-so is a narcissist and he's possessed by demons. But within my own heart and in private conversations, I began to acknowledge, yeah, this man is hearing from the devil thinking it's God. He's a narcissist and he's a sociopath. That doesn't make me wrong for acknowledging that. It positions me to begin to heal from what it was I was experiencing. So we have to call it for what it is. That might not have been a church that hurt you. It might be a social club of people who talk about being Christians, but live their lives and act as if God didn't even exist. That wasn't a pastor who loved you and had your best interests at heart that hurt you. That was someone with selfish ambition trying to build their own kingdom for their own name's sake in the name of God as a disguise to cover it. Now, just as the first point built into the second, the second one builds into the third. And that is the third tip on how to heal from spiritual abuse is to reconsider the truth and reframe the story. Since abusive spiritual leaders gaslight you, guilt trip you, manipulate you, you often feel like the truth about what happened is that you were the problem, you were rebellious, you weren't loyal, that God may be punishing you. Like all kinds of things can get twisted up in your head about this. When in reality, maybe it wasn't that at all. Perhaps that leader was insecure about you and felt threatened that you were winning the hearts of the people in the church more so than he and his wife were. Or the truth could be that you and the hundreds of other people who have left that church aren't the problem, that the common denominator is the pastor and his wife, or that particular leadership team that's in place. In other words, you can't own the problems of someone else. Now the second part to this is reframing the story, which is giving it a reason why. In the next video on this playlist, when we talk about re-engaging in ministry, I'm going to go into detail about how my experience broke my pride and dealt with my motives for being in ministry. And whether that was God's divine plan and the whole thing or not, it does allow me as a human being to have some kind of reason to grab onto as to why this whole disaster took place. If you can reframe the story, it'll help in your healing process. So it's not like God didn't care and he just left you there to be abused. Maybe like the Bible says, he saw fruit in you and so he pruned you so that you would bear even more fruit. He allowed you to go through a trial that you could handle because on the other side of this, he has something greater for you than what you had before this. That reframing of the story as to why this took place will help you in your journey of healing. Now, the fourth way to heal is to get the demonic prophecies out of your spirit. Yes, demonic prophecies prophecies. Whenever we have a spiritual leader or pastor who we respect, we often put a lot of weight behind their words, so much so that their advice sometimes becomes the will of God. We don't know what decision to make, and so we ask for their advice. They give it to us, and we run with it, believing that that is what God wants and that he is going to bless that. Well, that's fine if that leader is speaking life into you, believes in you, is supporting you. But if the relationship is breached and that leader starts speaking death into you, given your respect for ministry, that can seep into your spirit and begin to affect you in a negative 
negative way. Now, if you've watched the other videos in this playlist on Church Hurt, you know the part of my story where my pastor had told me once I left that church, if I began pursuing ministry outside of him, that God wasn't obligated to catch me if I jumped. That resulted in a fear and a hesitation in me. And there were many other instances where he would say a quick liner or, oh, I think this, or I don't believe that for you. And I would take it in and run with it. Now, some things sounded really off, but I wasn't sure. I just trusted that God knew what he was doing by speaking to me through the man of God in my life. But here's when it all changed. I got a phone call from a friend one day who said, bro, the lead pastor just called me, brought me to the church. I went in his office and he started asking questions about you and your wife and was insinuating y'all were doing things wrong and was trying to get me to say that y'all were. And I flat out told him that something didn't feel right. I didn't appreciate what he was doing. And so I got out of his office and called you, Aaron, and let you know, like, this is what's going on. The next day, our lead pastor called me and my wife into a meeting with the rest of the leadership team and told us that people were going to him and telling him that we were being disloyal and that we were spreading rumors. And we didn't say anything about the fact that our friend had called us and said it was the other way around. We just let it be. But in that meeting, the pastor's wife said that God had spoken to her and that she wrote down on a note to tell us what he said because she needed to prophesy this to us. And it said, may your marriage be divided where you two have divided. We said, okay, thank you for your words. After the meeting, we left and went home. And that's when I knew that my former pastors were hearing from some kind of voice in the spirit world thinking it was God, but it was way off. The reason I knew that is because what she prophesied to us blatantly contradicts the Bible. God does not go around prophesying to people's marriages that they crumble. He is not into division. That word was not from God. That was a demonic voice that was trying to get into our spirits and destroy our marriage through the voice of those former pastors. But what that revealed was a lot of the other prophecies and things they had said to us and about us were not the words of God. It was the words of their own hurt bleeding out of them along with the spirits that had attached themselves to them for their unforgiveness. So here's why I'm sharing that story is we needed to go back now and unlodge those demonic prophecies out of our spirit. You cannot take into your heart words that are not from God as if they were. They will destroy your life. And if you've been under an abusive pastor for any length of time, you've probably heard these types of things taught to you and purported as if it's biblical truth or said to you as prophecies. And if you just respect the pastor and his wife and their words to a high degree, then them just talking to you can be words that seep into your spirit. In order to heal from what has happened, you've got to denounce those words. You have to take that out of your spirit, reject it, lay it down at the feet of Jesus and say, I do not accept this. I rebuke this out of my spirit. Spirit, and I declare and you start speaking the word of God over your life and what the Bible says about the areas of your life that that abusive leader spoke about. Now I'm going to speak something to you that can help you walk out of this and I'm going to show you the context of where it's coming from. But not long after our former pastor's wife prophesied that to us, there was a preacher who had come speak at our church and was preaching and afterwards our lead pastor said that this man operates in the prophetic and I'm going to release him to begin to minister and if he has a word for anybody, I want him to take his liberty. Well, he not knowing me or the lead pastor really or anything that was going on in that church walked straight up to my wife and I with a microphone and said these words. The enemy has attacked you and has made you second guess. There has been a plan in place to destroy you and to wear you out. I reverse the curse. I speak life. I come against spirits of fear and intimidation. The devil has made you fear and second guess your calling, but I reverse the curse now. I declare a season of freedom and life and courage. The enemy has tried to rob your boldness, but I release boldness and courage now. I declare a season of freedom of life. I speak life, life, life in Jesus' name. The words that stood out to me during that prophecy the most during that time was when he said I reversed the curse. Because even though we were taking in the words of our pastors as if it were the words of God, it was the words of a curse. And God was letting us know, I'm not going to let that demonic prophecy stay in your spirit. Your marriage is united. My blessing is on your life. And you are going to go forward in ministry. I reversed the curse. And so I want to tell you right now that same word that God sent me during that season of my life. I reversed the curse. The things that have been spoken to you about you not going anywhere, you can't move forward you're stuck and all those lies that have been prophesied to you I reverse the curse I release you into a season of freedom and a season of life in Jesus name now the fifth way to heal from what has happened is the good old-fashioned forgiveness you've got to get bitterness out. Being hurt, being offended, being bitter doesn't make you bad. It makes you hurt. It becomes bad if you allow that to fester and to grow. If that root of bitterness gets in you and you don't kill that root and dig it up. I know the last thing you want to hear right now is that you need to forgive because you've probably been told that a hundred times. And when you work on forgiving, the abuse continues and it's never the other person's fault. I know. But maybe it's because forgiveness is a concept that we don't fully understand. And when we do understand what it means and how to do it, 
we can walk in it fully. Now to help with that, in addition to this playlist on church hurt, I also have a playlist on forgiveness. I'm gonna put both on the screen at the end of this video so you can see the other ones on church hurt but can also explore more about forgiveness. It's five short videos on what forgiveness really is and what it's not, why we should forgive, how to forgive someone, how many times to forgive someone, and how not to receive forgiveness. The first four videos are the meat and are a must watch. I know I sound biased, but there is no better content on YouTube, podcasts, books, anywhere available on how to actually forgive someone. You have to watch those videos and let God minister to you through them. But you cannot heal if you don't forgive. You just need to see that forgiveness may not be what you thought it is, and it's easier than you think. But I trust that God is going to help you and walk you through this. Now, the sixth thing we have to do to heal from spiritual abuse is to reconnect with a healthy church and a healthy pastor. Even if you go to a big church and hide in the crowd, you don't want to stay there forever. You need to re-engage, which is the topic of the next video. But for now, just going, not staying at home and letting your Bible reading and prayer life dry up and your hunger for God just dissipate. In our case, we went to a church over an hour away that was not in the same denomination. And nobody knew my former pastor, so they wouldn't ask questions. I wouldn't have to say anything about him. We could just be there and at our own pace get involved. I did say I would just attend the church and within three months we were part of the setup team and coordinating volunteers. I mean, it's in our hearts. We can't get away from it, but that's not going to be the same process for everyone. But thankfully, after being there for a while, God started opening doors and we began to travel and I became best friends with some of the greatest pastors all across this country and even in other places of the world. And I've seen that pastors are genuine. They love the people in their church. They're selfless. Some of the greatest people I have ever met in my life are in ministry. So what has this done for us emotionally, psychologically? spiritually it's shown us like there are great pastors there are great churches you had a really bad experience and just because you get pricked by a needle doesn't mean the entire haystack is full of spikes so in your context it's going to be your own style it might be a friend who goes to a small church that you want to connect with you might want to go all in and get involved somewhere you might want to go to a big church and hide or whatever you do don't just give up on God because of what happened in your experience you have to reconnect with a healthy church and a healthy pastor to heal. The seventh part of healing is to rebuild a network. You need new friends and new connections. This is especially true for those who have experienced being ostracized and shunned away, especially even if you were sucked into that church and there was no other connections outside of that church. Like in our case, I gave my all to that local assembly. I didn't do anything else outside of that church. So my entire world was that group of people. Once that was ripped out from under us, I had no network. So the new church you go to is going to provide that, but I I would encourage you to go beyond that. In my case, something I have always been fascinated with was martial arts. I watched all the Bruce Lee movies growing up and even went visit my boy at his grave in Seattle. I've always wanted to study martial arts and about three years after leaving our old church and reestablishing connections with new churches and new pastors, I wanted to broaden my network of friends. And so I joined Jiu Jitsu, which is basically the art and science of personal growth disguised as fighting techniques. Therefore, I've grown so much from it, but I've also built a network of friends in my local community from the Jiu Jitsu gym. So whether it's martial arts or another sport or Pilates or the Rotary Club or something, build some type of network of friends around you that can be a support to you, that can be a strength to you, and can help you to reconnect with other healthy human beings. Now, the eighth way to heal is to replace what you lost in man with what you've gained in God. You see, back in that church, my former pastor gave me all my answers. When I needed to make a life decision, I just went to my pastor, asked him about it, and he gave me his opinion. And whatever that was is what I did. I didn't have to pray. I had a prayer life, but I didn't have to ask God questions and hear his voice and let him lead me and then become accountable to God for following him or not following him. Because of this, the roots in my prayer life grew deeper. The dependence I had on my former pastor is now placed on God himself. And while what I was told back then was that trusting in God and hearing from God yourself means you're an island unto yourself and you're unsubmitted and you're a wildfire out there, when in all actuality what I was doing was idolatry. I had a father figure and a pastor and wasn't looking to my heavenly father to be that for me. So once what I had in that man was stripped away from me, I then learned to get that same thing from God. My identity that was wrapped up in the ministry I had inside of that local church was taken away and that crushed me. But in that crushing, I learned that my identity is in Christ. And so I began to allow God to replace what ministry once was. Now that God is in his right place in my life, I can have healthy relationships with a pastor and with ministry and with all the other great things we can enjoy in life as long as they are in their place. A great step towards healing and really the maturity one goes through after having walked through these types of experiences is the beauty of losing everything and then gaining everything. 
So that's on healing. But how do we get back involved in ministry and actually re-engage our purpose and calling in God? Well, that's what we'll talk about in the next video on this playlist of Church Hurt right here. And remember to check out the playlist on forgiveness to learn what it really is and what it's not, and most importantly, how to do it. And be sure to subscribe and notify the bell to stay updated with all the new uploads.